Welcome again, Saint Sai, of course, I'm your dearest servant and lesson host, uh, Brother Pastor Brian Dale uh, from St. Mark, right here in Waterloo, Iowa, talking about Lesson 7, The Sower and the Seed. The devotional reading is the 95th number of song. The background scripture is Matthew 13, 1 through 23, Mark 4, Luke 8, 5 through 15. And today's scripture is Matthew 13, 1 through 9, 18 through 20. Before we go forward, I want you to like and subscribe. Uh, like the video, subscribe uh, to the channel. And as always, if you have questions, Please, please just put them down in the comment section. I will endeavor, obviously, to kind of answer those questions for you. And I'm thinking uh, for our subscribers, which we're inching up on 4,000 now, I think we're going to do a live at some point to answer your toughest questions and challenges. The devotional reading, again, is 95th number. So I'm teaching by the shore, Matthew 1 through 3a. Verse 1, the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So they went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables. And, and something I don't want us to miss here today, saints, about the sower and the seed, we're going to learn about that parable really is you notice this, that Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside. Multitudes came. He went to the ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them. I'm not sure why Jesus got into the ship. You know, it's a bunch of guesswork, but I'm not into guesswork. But what I do know is this. Some need arose for him to get into the ship and use that ship as a platform for the message. The point is when the Lord sets your hand anyway to a task, you need oftentimes to realize that wherever God gathers his people, whether it's one or a hundred, and you are at the forefront to speak a word into somebody's life, it could be in a quiet room, it could be in a hospital room, wherever God gathers his people is a platform for you to teach them and speak to them, pray for them, love on them, listen to them, cry them, empathize, sympathize, whatever that thing is. Because what I don't want you to miss here is these people gathered on the shore, Jesus got in the ship, and then Jesus is going to tell them some things. So what you will find out, a lot of times we read the words of Jesus, and that's great. But I want you to look at the situations as well in which he ministered. And what you're going to find out is that there are diverse situations, whatever situation God himself, who came in the flesh, according to John chapter 1, everywhere was a platform to for him to carry out the ministry. Here's some examples. Not just this boat he got in and started teaching them, which was a platform, a pulpit maybe. But I want to stay away from pulpit because this ain't just about preachers. The next thing was a well. I mean, Jesus went to the well. Woman showed up at the well. That interaction at the well, that woman came to get water. Jesus spoke to her about water. That became a platform right where Jesus was dealing with the things that were around him, the people that he was speaking to was the platform, which was a woman for him to minister. Remember when he called uh, first, his first two disciples, he said, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Their job site was a platform for Jesus to minister and serve them. Here's the big ask. Here's the big question. Are you missing a platform that God set aside specifically for you to minister? Well, I can push on to that. Jesus went to a funeral, basically. When he went to see Lazarus, Lazarus was dead. He went to the tomb. People were mourning. And what happened is Jesus used that as a platform for a miracle. And the ultimate platform, but even when he was on the cross hanging and dying, that was a platform to him to minister to his mother, his earthly mother, and his disciple, son, behold your mother, mother, behold your son. The Bible says, and that disciple took her, Mary, his mother, into his house from that hour. Jesus ministered to the thief on the cross while he was hanging up there. He was speaking to God, showing people how to, and he said, oh, he called on Elijah. But wherever Jesus was is the point. It was a platform for ministry. Saints of God, don't just believe that when you're in a church, then you can start sharing Jesus. When you're in a church, you can do these great things for God. Because I would suggest to you that wherever you are is an opportunity for you to perform spiritual CPR on somebody. Here's what I mean by that. And I've talked to you about this a couple of years ago. I remind you about this, especially in more traditional settings. You got church home? That's not the question. Saints, you're going to run people away asking them that the people who need Jesus the most, when you say that, they know they don't. And I just saw uh, 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 somebody carrying on a conversation with someone. And one of the first things I was, do you go to church or whatever that was? And, and the lady kind of like put up a, a wall right then instead of leading into the conversation and finding out what that woman really need. You don't have to ask somebody if they go to church. 
You don't need to ask that. What you need to endeavor to do through the Holy Spirit is determine the need and meet it right there on the spot. A spiritual CPR, you know, when ambulance is called, doctors don't jump out of the back of the ambulance. The doctors are at the hospital, emergency room, ICUs. That's where they are. These temporary or these para kind of uh, pseudo doctors, emergency medical transition, they show up in the ambulance to stabilize the patient, bag them up, get them to the doctor at the hospital. So I'm saying you all need to be spiritual EMTs on that ambulance that you can actually give people the resuscitation in the spirit or whatever they need right there on the spot because God placed you to do that. And then maybe they'll come to the hospital. Maybe it's not going to be yours, but then they can come to the hospital. And I know some people have said this. I even heard a, a local preacher saying, church ain't no hospital. Well, Jesus referred to himself as like, well, he told a parable about it isn't the well. They need a physician rather than sick. I mean, that's what Jesus did. I mean, if Jesus went to hospital, why did they drop the man down through a roof of a house right where Jesus was? Jesus healed him. People go to hospitals to get healed. So I understand he's a savior. I'm not trying to minimize that. So that argument, I could destroy that theologically longer and philosophically. That argument is nonsense. And even then, sick people ain't got to go there. It's people that go there to get checkups too that may be healthy. So when we talk about that, whatever platform God has placed you on, you need to perform spiritual CPR right there. And the sowing of the seed is Matthew 13, 3b through 9, saying, Behold, a sword went forth, this is Jesus, and when he sowed some seeds, he fell by the wayside, and fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and when they sprung up, because uh, which they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they scorched, and because they had no root, they withered. And some fell among thorns, and thorns sprung up and choked them out. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some hundred and some sixty and some thirty. Or whoever has ears, let them hear. This parable deals with so many things. And if you ask seven different Bible teachers, They'll tell you probably seven different things because it's that vast and all encompassing doesn't mean the word is in conflict. It just means different people have different revelations, uh, can't have it at the same time at different times. It's, are you rooted in rich soil? Are you rooted in rich soil? And I'll take it to the war in Ukraine now between Russia and Ukraine. And before I go there, I really believe that y'all, especially us black folk, y'all really need to turn off CNN and MSNBC and even uh, for you others. Uh, Republicans, I ain't in on any of that. You need to turn off Fox News and you need to seek alternative news sources because what you have been told is going on isn't necessarily what's going on. And know that because there's people on the ground doing real report. Part of the battle for Ukraine is Ukraine has rich resources. A lot of fertilizer anyway originates there. They have probably the richest soil on the planet and it's black, it's rich, almost anything can grow in Ukraine because the soil is rich. You put a seed in that ground, it's going to grow. It's going to grow something. That's part of the battle over resources. If anybody says, what's the greatest resource I'm talking about, like for the body that the body needs to live, there's no more important resource on earth than rich soil and water. Soil is needed to grow food, even when it grows food for the animals that we eat, the grass, water obviously we need. But the soil of, I'm talking here about the soil of the spirit, is your spirit, if you will, that soil that's rich in nutrients, that when God plants something there, something is going to grow up out of it, even though you may not know what it is, it's according to his word at that time and according to his will at that time. So you can be that emergency medical technician on site. Now we realize that some of these seeds fell on different grounds and they couldn't grow because they weren't rooted. The Bible talks about, especially for church leadership, one of the qualifications is that that person is not a novice being lifted up and then they will fall into condemnation. First Timothy chapter three, because novices with the word, they are like this soil that's probably a, that didn't have much earth. It sprung up, it had no deepness of earth, and when the sun come up, it was scorched and it withered away. Some people go out too soon because they're novices, and many of y'all are hiring novices uh, because they're young. A lot of times they can be controlled, they're educated. Y'all hiring these novices and wondering why hell is popping up in your, in your churches. Well, the reason is, a lot of times, just because God calls somebody... It doesn't mean that their seed is yet planted deep enough that it's going to spring up and produce fruit and growth but in their lives, in the lives of their family, especially in your life. Because if that seed is not producing at a level it should because of immaturity or because they're not allowing it to or because 
It may not even be planting season. I'll talk about that maybe another time. If something is going on in their lives, in their family's life, the Bible asks, how can they rule the house of God? So another of that is some fell among thorns and it was choked out. Those are the seeds. People, man, people get on fire for God. They do all of this stuff. They start with a good warfare. Something was planted. And then they get around the cares of this life. And it's like this thorn choking the seed out. Things are choked out. They're hanging around the wrong people, talking to the wrong people. They're doing things that they shouldn't do so their seeds won't grow. So we got this seed that isn't deep enough in, in rich soil. Then we got the seed that's just falling on stony ground and it's, and it's choked out. Then we have this good ground seed, which is falling into earth. It's, it's maturing at the rate it's supposed to. Because again, saints, we all know my wife likes to plant flowers in the spring and there's a certain time where those flowers grow. She likes to plant tomatoes. There's a time when uh, you plant that seed. If you give it enough time, it's going to grow up and produce the fruit that is supposed to maybe a couple of months later, whatever that is. All I'm saying today, saying is order to bring forth good fruit out of good soil and good ground. There's a time there. But the sower of the seed is the one who needs to get the glory. And I would submit to you that you're not even the sower of the seed. It is God. Because when I think about the what Paul said when he talked about three times he prayed that something be removed from him. But he said, God told him his grace is sufficient for you. So Paul said, well, he is weak. God is strong. I would suggest to you that we are literally leaving, leaning anyway on the everlasting arm of God. And we don't even have the strength to move the dirt unless it was it's his strength in our weakness. So allow God to plant that seed on that soil that will go on good ground and that will grow up. But saints in all things have patience that God is going to get the glory and that you don't want to run out there telling everybody too much. A lot of you, and you think back on ministry, God did something in your life. You was just so overjoyed and excited. It is just you revealed it too soon. And them thorns got around you in the spirit and choked that out of you because it wasn't the time for you and you did not have the strength yet. Your, it wasn't deep enough. The soil was good. You hadn't given it uh, the time. One plant, one waters, God get the increase. You hadn't given it time to grow before you spoke it and you were discouraged because you didn't have the word enough and the maturity enough to push back. And finally, uh, Matthew 13, 18 through 23, and the word of the parable, one here, if the kingdom understands not, then come to the wicked one and that he was choked out. You can read that yourself. Saints, allow God to plant that good seed in the ground. Allow it to grow in the soil that he's planted in your life. But when it springs up, don't, don't talk too soon. Joseph revealed something, God, twice that God did not tell him to reveal. He ended up in a well. Now, what we meant for evil, his brothers, God meant for good. We know that. But there's no sign that God told him to reveal that, either to his brothers or to his father. Say, your father's going to bow down before you? He wasn't the oldest son. Do you know how ridiculous that sounded that a father would bow down to his youngest son? You could do that today and you're like, what? That's my son. But Joseph came and told his father about this dream, told his brothers about the dream, and he ended up in a well. Don't reveal it too soon. Or somebody, something could choke the life up out of that, and that is Satan. So be it.